captured him. When Amalia captured him, he said that basically they said that either you say bad things about him, you mm -hmm. You swear at him, you disgrace him, otherwise we'll kill you. He said, kill me. The beauty of it was that he said that I don't want my children after me. So let's say he kills me first. Mm -hmm side with them. So he said, first kill my children so I can have kind of the, uh, what you call it, Dal Basalim, the in any way that I can have relaxation, yeah. that my kids have died in the right way, then you kill me. So two of his sons were killed, and then after that he said, can I pray two units of prayers? So when he prayed two units of prayers, he prayed it very fast. So he said that, I prayed it fast, generally I don't pray fast, but the reason why I prayed it today fast was that you don't think that I'm scared of you. He goes, now kill me. And funnily enough, even Ahl Sunnah, for example, Mulana Maududi, when he writes the book, the Lafat he says that the biggest problem was with Ma'awiyah is that he killed Ashab of the Prophet, which was Qudur ibn Adi. And even Aisha came protesting about this, but by that time he'd been killed. This is that man. So ultimately speaking, we need to have love of Ahlul Bayt, just like this man did, that we can sacrifice our kids first. And this is the first person in history, really, if you look at it, who rather wants to see, because every parent wants their kids to live and he's that person who says no, I want my kids to die first so that I know that they've died in the right way. Yes, yes, yes. He was a commander of Imam Ali's. He was a he was. he was the commander. He was for Sifin, one of the commanders and at the same time he was a commander in, in Jamal as well. So I mean, a number of commanders. At the same time, out of the three most rich people, he was one of them as well. So he used a lot of his wealth to free the Shia, yeah. to you know, to spend in the way of Allah, spend in the way of the Holy Prophet of God. The Holy Prophet of God again respected him and saw him in very high regard. So Maumia not only killed somebody who was dear to Amir Maumin, but also he killed one of the companions of the Prophet. Yeah. And Sunni shouldn't be very contradictory in this. They shouldn't realize. Because many Sunni ulama have written this in their books that mm. they don't believe Maui was a good person. Many of them don't believe it. Yeah. For example, Maududi hated him. Said that one of the reasons why we don't believe in Maui, reason being, is that because he killed us, one of the Sahabis of the Holy Prophet of God, and one of the first big Sahabis as well. Mm. And his. So he was killed with 15 people. So. And his complete name was? Bujr ibn Adi. Yeah. So let's go and pray. So pray. This is a person who was one of the companions of the Holy Prophet of God, as well as Amir al-Muhaneen. Now when many people get confused is that he wasn't just the companion of Amir al-Muhaneen, but he was also the companion of the Holy Prophet of God. A very famous Sunni scholar by the name of Abu Ala Maududi, who is one of the founders of Jamaat al-Islami as well. When he writes a book known as Khalafat al he says that one of the biggest charters against Maui, a Sunni person saying is one of the biggest charters against him, the biggest crimes that he did was that he killed this man, Kujur ibn Adi. Out of the three most wealthy people, he was one of those wealthy people who contributed his wealth afterwards, after the migration to Medina, to serve Islam and to spread Islam. Many people, for example, Iranians, he freed him by paying off and, for example, those slaves then became part of the Islamic empire they became freemen. As well as this, he was one of the commanders of the army of Amir al So in Jamal, for example, for example, in Safin. He was a fighting for Amir al to show the fact that, look, this is the heart and this is the truth. And his death is very fascinating. Why? Because of the number of people he went. And he went towards Syria, to Syria. And he came here and Mali gave the order for him to be killed. The order was given. As the order was given, there's something very strange he did. That strange thing was that he had two sons with him. And he said to the army, he said, well, look, can we get out of this? They said, yes, if you curse a little more minion, if you denounce him, you can get out of this. He says, that we can't do. Once we've found the truth, we're not going back on the truth. He said, so they said, well, we're going to kill you. And he said, okay, fair enough, you can kill me. But I have a request. He says, what's the request? He says, my request is, and this is the first father who's ever saying this, he's saying that, I want you to kill my children first, those two sons first, and then me. So the question was asked, why is this? And he answered, he said that, well, if, for example, you kill me first, there's a probability that afterwards my children may give in to you 
and then I turn that back. So he says that I want to see first the bodies of my children, and then after that I'll know within my heart, be relaxed, and then after that you can kill me. So he says, okay, fair enough. So now I want to pray two units of prayers, which you guys are going to pray. And he prayed it, and afterwards he said that, know that this is one of the fastest prayers that I've ever done. Because I want to show you that I'm not going to delay something out of the fear of death. There is no fear of death there. I'm going to meet my Creator, my Master, Mil Mumni, and told me this is the way you're going to die. And so he was killed. When he was killed, even people like Aisha complained. Many of the Ashab, they complained that why did you kill such a person? So hence, Sayyidah Zainab says, you know, for example, there's a narration that says that if you go to the grave of Sayyidah Zainab, you visit him, you don't visit him, it's like you haven't actually gone and visited him. He's a very holy man, he's a very pious person. But I think one of the things we need to pray when we come here, we need to ask him to intercede for us and say that, look, give us the ability to do service in the way that you did service. And give us the ability to sacrifice the lives of our children and ourselves just the same way as he did. And he wasn't up and late. He wasn't part of that special clan. But he was. Why? Because his heart was attached to them. And any person whose heart is attached to that clan, that family, those people, they're very special. So each one of you are very special people, especially in the eyes of these people. So now let's pray our two units of prayers. And as the narration say, whenever you go to the shrine of a believer, a holy person, do your units of prayers. Ask what you need to and then go. Don't hang around too long. Remember, many of told me to go to the shrine of the eighth imam. And the narration is there. Do what you need to do and then go. You've come here to do ziara, you do this. Why? Because you need to focus. That focus can be one minute, that focus can be ten minutes. But many people can't focus for an hour. So as long as you have that purity of heart, you've got the focus there. Hit it as quick as you can, hard as you can. You know, one jam, just do it. Take everything out. When it's all out, then go, because often it's your heart falters. Because the whole concept of the heart is that it changes. It rotates from one area to the other area. So now your heart is there. It fills, so let's go for it. What you're doing is you're, in a sense, because you've done the ziyar, you said salam. So your intention now is to recite the two units of prayers, not to him, but you're giving him as a gift for him in that respect. So for the acceptance of your ziyarah and as well, he's saying to Allah, reciting these two prayers as a gift for Jibni, so that the thawar for the reward goes to him but at the same time you're benefiting from this as well and this is the completion of everything everything has a system and this is the completion of that system so let's recite once and all and let's get down to it <laughs> and those people who can recite the ayat of Kursi they do that Alhamdulillah when we came in we and the brothers we recited it together but now the next five, ten minutes, you're in your zone. So tune in. We're together, we're praying for each other, but at the same time, you need to have your time with him as well. So everybody just go into their own little thing now. Five minutes even, one minute, 30 seconds, whatever you have, just know everything is there. That's your linkage at the moment, because Ahlul Bayt have told you to come here. This is why we come here. And Allah has told us to go to Ahlul Bayt. This is all Wilayat, this concept and system of Wilayat. So let's go into our zones. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Sara Amir al-Mumineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, I'm Sara al-Islam.